YouTube, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Ivy, and today I'm going to be talking about Clockwork Prints by Cassandra Clare. I really cannot do the throw thing. This is the second book in the Infernal Devices trilogy. The first book, which is called Clockwork Angel, is gonna have spoilers in this video. Leave, please, if you have not read Clockwork Angel, because I don't want to spoil it for you. So at the end of Clockwork Angel, Mortmain has disappeared, and things are kind of calming down, and Tessa is going to stay at the Institute. The epilogue, Will goes to Magnus and is like, yo, I need your help. We begin this book with a prologue in which Will is going to a ghost to collect supplies to take to Magnus so that Magnus can help him out. Also, we go to a council meeting where it is decided that the Branwells, Charlotte and Henry, have two weeks to locate Mortmain, otherwise the Institute is going to be given to Benedict Lightwood. That's basically all I got for the not spoilers part. I'm so sorry, but like, I just, I, I need to talk about this. So if you haven't read this one, Goodbye. <laughs> I'd just like to start this out by saying that at the beginning of this book, I hated Will, but now I love him. Also, Tessa and Jem at the beginning of this book have bonded so much, and it made me so happy how much they had bonded and how close they are now. Like, whew, friendship goals. Also, Jem is my favorite. We learn that Will was cursed by a demon five years ago. That's what he, like, opened the box, and that's what happened. Right at the very beginning, Sophie sees Jessamine leaving the Institute at night dressed like a dude, and obviously I was like, ooh, that's suspicious, but I didn't think it was was like as big a deal as it turned out to be. The Shadowhunter gang plus Tessa is researching Mortmain because they're trying to find him and they learn a little more about his backstory which I really liked because you know we kind of get to see his reasons behind what he is doing. Mortmain's parents were warlocks and they were both killed by Shadowhunters because it, Mortmain's dad was suspected of having the Book of the White, and he was, like, reanimating corpses and stuff, which is scary. Will, Jem, and Tessa go to visit a shadow hunter named Starkweather to try to learn more about Mortmain. Starkweather has a really, really strange reaction to seeing Tessa, and I, I could be wrong, but I think we're going to be learning more about that in Book 3. Starkweather points our gang in the direction of <laughs> Ravenscar, Ravenscar Manor, and that is where Will sees Cecily, his sister. Whoa! An automaton shows up and gives them a warning saying stop investigating otherwise we will kill Will's family. So naturally they leave the manor and Will absolutely loses his mind. Very worrisome. Also, why is Will's family involved in this? Will goes back to Magnus and he reveals what his curse actually is, and I went from absolutely despising him to being absolutely in love with him. The curse is that anyone who loves him will die unless he leaves them forever, and whew, that's the reason why he is such a bad person, at least on the outside, because he knows that if people get attached to him, they're gonna die. He's had to do this for five years. Five years is such a long time. Five years ago, I was ten. Meanwhile, Tessa is changing into Starkweather to try to learn more stuff. She doesn't really learn much about Mortmain, but there is this little girl who keeps popping up, and I'm very curious about what this is. Also, Tessa thinks that she sees Mrs. Dark in the courtyard, and that is, like, so no bueno. Like, I thought we were done with those creepy ladies, but I guess not. So after Will goes to see Magnus, he goes to the drug den and the tea. Let me, let me get some water first. He goes, he gets really high, and Jem and Tessa have to go save him. Jem is obviously not very happy because Jem's condition thing, and I, I just, I feel so bad for Jem. Like, honestly, he's my baby, and I love him, and I, this hurt my heart. <laughs> One good thing did come from Will going and being a jerk, and that is he learns that there are werewolves who are being given the drug by Mortmain to work on something. We don't know what yet. Will and Jem don't fight for very long because they literally cannot stay away from each other. I was so conflicted because I wanted people to like Will because, I don't know, they don't understand what he's going through and like he's actually a good person, but I didn't want them to like him because that means they would die. 
where are we? Oh, so we learn a little bit more about the Lightwood brothers and Gabriel reveals that his dad told him that their mother died of grief because their uncle committed suicide. Their uncle committed suicide because Charlotte's dad turned him into the clave. And their mom's dying wish was to have the institute taken from Charlotte's family. And whoa, the drama. So then we find, well, Sophie finds, um, the note from Nate to Jessamine. Tessa makes a runtime decision that she's going to transform into Jesse and go to this party along with Will. Tessa is talking to Nate and this whole exchange was so gross and so intense but like so well written it just it was it was great <laughs> we learned that <laughs> jessamine has been spying on them the entire time she's married to nate which is disgusting she planted the book of the white in tessa's room so that tessa would get arrested also tessa learns that mort not mortmain benedict is mortmain's pawn and i mean that's not like, not unexpected but still like Mortmain wants Benedict to have the Institute because that would mean Mortmain, by extension, would have the Institute. So then they drink the lemonade, and I was so mad at them. Like, of course there's gonna be drugs in the freaking lemonade. What are you doing? Thankfully, Magnus saves them. He comes out on the balcony where they're, you know, making out. And let me tell you, I was so relieved that it was Magnus and not, like, some rando, because that would have been so bad. They're about to leave the party. Will sees the demon that cursed him and chases it and gets a tooth. Oh my god, I was so excited. He's at Magnus's place, and then Camille comes back, and then... <laughs> is such a jerk and like you know she and Magnus kind of break up and Magnus kisses Will and <laughs> I laughed so hard. Back at the Institute the Shadowhunters use the mortal sword on Jessie because you know she's a jerk and they can't learn much because she has like the mental block so they're gonna send her to the Silent City but she does reveal that Nate said that Tessa's mom was a shadow hunter and her dad was a demon but like that doesn't make any sense but like does it make sense we have some love going on so Sophie and Gideon are getting together which I love because I love Sophie and I want her to have all the happiness in the world. Jem and Tessa confess that they love each other, which I don't know. I have such mixed feelings about this, but we'll talk about it more later. Jem and Tessa go to the Silent City together to convince Jessamine to write a note to trap Nate. The Shadow Hunters go ahead to the warehouse where this meeting is going to take place, and we have that really intense scene with the werewolf dying and Jen is all freaked out and I was just I didn't like it I didn't like it at all so then Tessa gets there and <sighs> Nate immediately knows that it's her and I like it wasn't surprising but I was still like oh boy it's revealed that Nate is actually Aunt Harriet's son now we know why he's so messed up in the head. The scene with the giant automaton attacking and like, you know, almost killing like all of my favorites, um, that was intense, but like so well written. And my favorite part was how Tessa in her mind was thinking of tips that Gabriel had given her in training. Like that was so well done. And yeah, it just made it feel like so worth it, you know, because we actually she's learning she's not just going from like zero to a hundred like sh she's slowly working her way up nate dies and he says some confusing stuff and like he kind of like apologized but not really i still don't like him then i thought will was gonna die and i almost started crying and i was hyperventilating but he obviously didn't so we're okay will goes to magnus and we summon the demon and this is when it's revealed there was no curse. He wasted five years of being a complete a-hole. <sighs> I was so incredibly happy for him, but filled with so much dread because Gem and Tessa had been like, you know, canoodling and he's like, yay, I can finally tell Tessa how I feel. But um, <sighs> speaking of love, Charlotte and Henry finally just talk and tell each other how they're feeling and then it turns out they both love each other so much and so I don't know that made me happy because this entire two books I was like y'all could be so cute together but now they are also Jem proposes to Tessa and she says yes my issue with this is that 
Jem is so much more in it than Tessa is. Don't get me wrong, Jem is still my favorite, we stan, but he just, he's so much more into it, into it than she is, and I feel like it's not fair to him. Like, I think she does truly love him, but not to the extent that he loves her. It's really, it's hard. We have a meeting with the entire gang. <laughs> and <laughs> Benedict has demon pox. And oh my god, this, 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 it's just, it's brilliant. I, I can't, I can't even. Benedict is working for Mortmain because Mortmain is promising him a cure to his demon pox. We also learn that Benedict basically killed his wife because he gave her demon pox and she died. This leads Charlotte to blackmail Benedict with this information that she has because if it were to get out then his entire family would be like dishonor and that's bad. When Gideon came over to Team Good I was so excited. I do have sympathy for Gabriel because all he's ever known is what his dad has told him and he just he doesn't know any better. Is Gideon left to go to wherever he went. I forget. But he left and saw that, you know, what his dad is doing is wrong. But Gabriel has never got to experience anything else. At the end, Will tells Tessa the truth and she breaks his heart and I cry. So they decide that she's still gonna marry Jem. She's not gonna tell him that Will is in love with her or that she's in love with Will. Like I said before, I do think that Tessa truly loves Jem, but just not in the way that she loves Will. And it's it's just it's such a it's such a bad situation. And I hate Cassandra Clare, but I love Cassandra Clare. It shattered my heart into a million tiny pieces because I love all three of them and they're all in pain. Will is just, he's sacrificing so much for his Parabati. Again, I love Jem so much, but like, this is not gonna go well. Like, he's bound to find out eventually. Come on, like, it's gonna get out. And when it does, it's gonna be really bad. Will, Will was so excited and it was, it was great. He, it was like, he was so happy. And then, I, oh my god, I, this ending though, I just, I can't, I can't, I can't handle it. Charlotte and Henry are gonna have a kid, which is exciting. Like, I guess that's a little bit of happiness. Also, Cecily shows up. And I'm not sure what I feel about this, because it's kind of out of nowhere. I, I don't trust her yet. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just like, why now? I have trust issues after Jessamine, I think. Just like Clockwork Angel, I was left with some questions, so we're just gonna go through them real quick. Why did Starkweather react so strangely to Tessa? Like, that's the one that's bothering me the most. Why is Cecily just showing up now? And what is Mortmain planning? Because we still, like, we really, we're really in the dark here with Mortmain. So I'm so, I'm like, I can't even express how excited I am for the next book, because it's about to go down. So, overall, I love this book. This is definitely my favorite Cassandra Clare book so far. Um, honestly, it's the characters. Like, I just, I love them all so much, except Jessamine. I cannot wait to see everything come together in book three and just see these, these character dynamics, you know, play out because there's gonna be so much drama and I'm so excited but like dreading it because I just want them all to be happy. I honestly have no idea what to expect in book three. Like, I, I, I have no idea where this is going. I gave this a five out of five stars. It's incredible. I love it so, so, so much. I read it so fast for me. Like, it took me four days. And this has, like, a lot of pages, bro. So, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye.